From the private journals of Mace Windu. Initial Harun call entry. Deepa's down there. Right now. I shouldn't be thinking about this. I shouldn't be thinking about her. Not yet. But she's down there. She's been down there for months. I can't imagine what might have happened to her. I don't want to imagine. I'll find out soon enough. Focus. I have to focus. Concentrate on what I know is true while I wait for the mud to settle and the water to become clear. A lesson of Yoda's, but sometimes you can't wait. And sometimes the water never clears. I can focus on what I know about Harun Call. I know a lot. Here's some of it. Harun Call, sole planet of the Alhar system. Harun Kal is the name given to it in the language of the indigenous human population, the Koranai, uplanders. It translates to basic as above the clouds. From space, the world appears to be oceanic, with only a few green-topped islands rising from a restless multicolored sea. But this is deceptive. The sea with which these islands punctuate is not liquid, but an ocean of heavier-than-air toxic gases which plume endlessly from the planet's innumerable active volcanoes. Only on the mountaintops and the high plateaus can oxygen-breathing life survive, and not on many of these. Unless they rise far above the cloud sea, they are vulnerable to Harun Kal's unpredictable winds. Its capital, Pelik Baw, population 435,000, is located on the sole inhabited landmass, the plateau known as the Coronal Highland, and is the largest permanent settlement on this primarily jungle-covered planet. The indigenous humans live in small semi-nomadic tribal groups called Gosh and avoid the settlements which are maintained by off-worlders of a wide variety of species. The Coronai lump all off-worlders and settled folk under the somewhat contemptuous category of Balawai, down folk. I was born on Harun Kal, far back in the highland. I am a full blood Koran. A hundred generations of my ancestors breathed that air and drank that water, ate the fruit of that soil, and were buried deep within it. I've returned only once, thirty-five standard years ago, but I have carried that world with me. But it is not home. Home is Coruscant. Home is the Jedi Temple. Deepa Bilaba came into my life by accident. One of those joyous coincidences that are sometimes the gift of the universe. I found her after I fought and killed the pirates who had murdered her parents. These pirates had kidnapped their victim's lovely infant daughter. She grew to girlhood in the temple and to womanhood as my Padawan. The proudest moment of my life was the day I stood and directed the Jedi Council to welcome its newest member. Deepa is more than a friend to me. She's one of those dangerous attachments. She is the daughter I will never have. The Republic was caught entirely unprepared. After a thousand years of peace, no one, especially not we Jedi, truly believed civil war would ever come. This was the Confederacy's great advantage. The Separatists not only expected war, but counted on it. By the time the smoldering Clone War burst into Geonosian flame, their ships were already in motion. In the weeks that followed, while we Jedi tended our wounds and mourned our dead, while the Senate scrambled to assemble a fleet, any kind of fleet, to match the power of the Trade Federations, while Supreme Chancellor Palpatine pleaded and bargained and sometimes had to outright threaten wavering senators to not only stay loyal to the Republic, but to support the Grand Army with their credits and their resources, the Separatists had fanned out across the galaxy, seeding the hyperspace lanes with their forces. Strategically, it was a masterpiece. Any thrust into the core worlds of the Confederacy would be blunted and delayed long enough for Separatist reserves to engage it. Any attack with sufficient strength to swiftly overwhelm their pickets would leave hundreds or thousands of worlds uncovered to swift separatist reprisal. Even before the Republic was ready to fight, we had lost. Yoda is the master strategist of the Jedi Council. 
a life as vast as his, predisposes one to see the big picture and take the long view. He developed our current strategy of limited engagement on multiple fronts. Our goal is to harass the separatists, wear them down in a war of attrition, chip away at them and prevent them from consolidating their position. The separatists don't enjoy unalloyed popularity, even in their core systems. And in any society, there are fringe elements eager to take up arms against authority. Jedi have been covertly inserted on hundreds of worlds with a common mission. To organize loyalist resistance, train partisans in sabotage and guerrilla warfare, and generally do whatever possible to destabilize the separatist governments. This was why Deepa Balaba came to Harun Call. I sent her here. In the temple archives are reports of the Jedi anthropologists who study the Koronai tribes. They have a theory that a Jedi spacecraft may have made a forced landing there perhaps thousands of years ago during the turmoil of the Sith Wars when so many Jedi were lost to history. There are several varieties of fungus native to the jungles of Harun Kol that eat metals and silicates. A ship that could not lift off again immediately would be grounded forever, and calm equipment would be equally vulnerable. The ancestors of the Koronai, the anthropologists believe, were these shipwrecked Jedi. This is their best explanation for a curious genetic fact. All Koronai can touch the Force. The true explanation may be simpler. We have to. Those who cannot use the Force do not long survive. Humans can't live in those jungles. The Koronai survive by following their grasser herds. Grassers, great six-limbed behemoths, tear down the jungle with their forehands and their massive jaws. The name comes from the grassy meadows that are left in their wake. It is in those meadows that the Koronai make their precarious lives. The grassers protect the Koronai from the jungle. The Koronai, in turn, with their force-bonded companions, the fierce ack dogs, protect the grassers. When the Jedi anthropologists were ready to depart, they had asked the elders of Ghosh Windu if they might take with them a child to train in the Jedi arts and recover the force talents of the Koronai to serve the peace of the galaxy. That would be me. I was an infant, an orphan, called by the name of my Ghosh, for my parents had been taken by the jungle before my naming day. I was six months old. The choice was made for me. I've never minded. I could have chosen no better life. <laughs>